Welcome to the Carla Marie and Anthony Show. My name is Anthony. I'm Carla Marie. Thank you very much. However you joined us this morning, whether you're watching or listening on your car, whether you're at work, whether you're at home, walking around, maybe you're walking your dog and you're watching on your phone. Thank forgot, you for hanging with us. Forgot to introduce Erica Shea. And this is Erica. She doesn't provide a lot other than her uh, adorableness and cuteness and the fact that she runs around a lot. But other than that, she doesn't really provide hiding. very much. <laughs> it's honestly like sometimes I know they're on, like, Look at the head tuck. Yeah, I don't know. It, it is weird because even when you bring out your camera, like your phone, mm-hmm. sometimes they'll stop what they're doing or hide or whatever. So uh, thank you to everyone who has gotten us through Hype Train Level 5 so far. We appreciate that. I can't see the Erica emotes. There they are. They're coming. They are coming. One of the things I have to add to one of our screens again is uh, we used to have all the emotes. If you use them, oh, they yeah. would pop up Explode. like behind everything. I have to add that again to one of our, at least one of our scenes here. Um, but a lot of people I know, Jen and Lisa gifted three Woo! subs each. I know Yay! Dave C84 gifted five subs. So thank you because those are those are the heavy lifters today. Thank you. Okay, what what are you doing here? Oh, she's gonna. She has things to say. No, she, okay. Let's go focus here. Uh... Now it's like I'm working with two children. Um, how was everyone's Valentine's Day? Carla Marie, how was yours? It was great. Yeah, okay. Everyone knows all the things I got you. That's true. Well, recap for people who aren't here. Um, I had a whisper to everyone the other day what I was getting Anthony while he stepped out of the room because I said something about like I was spending under 30 bucks and everyone was like, what? Mm-hmm. Kind of like judging me a little bit, just saying. I mean, it ended up being under 40 bucks and I got him all of his favorite things. <laughs> well, I will say the Papa John's uh, pizza, heart-shaped. the heart-shaped pizza it wasn't my one. It's not one of my favorite things. No, but for how long you've been like, I want Papa John's. For whatever reason, I just felt like having Papa John's for a while, and I finally got it on Valentine's Day with a heart shaped pizza. And I was like, but fine. it's a thin crust heart shaped pizza. Yeah, I guess um, it's easier for them to mold. Yeah, the interesting thing that I found was they don't cut it, <laughs> and there's no like proper way to cut a heart shaped pizza. Like you can't really cut it into regular slices. It doesn't yeah. work out like that. Um, um, what else did I get you? Chocolate covered gummy bears. Mm-hmm. Your favorite. I made you chocolate covered strawberries. Yep. I got you a Mexican Coke because you love Mexican Coke. Yep. Oh, um, I got you five dozen eggs. Yeah. That wasn't really part of the gift, but. But a great gift nonetheless. And there was something else. Well, you're going to have to put down the cat because we got to hype train level six, Carla Marie, which means that it's She's time to take our shot. Drinks. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Um, And then. My portion of Valentine's Day was going out to dinner that evening. Okay, I'm t- that's it, Erica. You're coming with me because Carla Marie cannot. It's her. She doesn't focus. know who Carla Marie is. You have to say, you have to say your mom. Huh? He won't say your mom to the cat. No, because you didn't. You're not their mom. You are I Carla Marie. Think I am. You are their caretaker. Go. Yeah, shots with little cat hair in them is what we're gonna have now. <laughs> There's cat hair in everything in this house. Everything. Um, but. We did dinner at a sushi place near the stadiums here in Seattle. Really good sushi. Probably it some was. of the best I've had in Seattle, actually. Um, it was really good. Um, the Amanda said five dozen eggs for under 40 bucks. So yeah. the five dozen eggs were not in the my tally. However, I got five dozen eggs for $15. I'm telling you, Seattle... My family's like, oh, the egg prices. I'm like, honestly, they're back to normal here. Uh, no, I feel like I've seen them. It depends on where you go, because I've seen them pretty expensive, like Target. That's because it's that certain brand, like Vita something. Uh, whatever. They are like, I don't know what they think. It was fifteen seventy nine. At Safeway. A lot of places like Costco are out of eggs. Uh, Fred Meyer was out of eggs, I believe. A lot of places are still running out. But we are not going to spend the entire stream talking about eggs, I promise. Um, we are going to take this shot. So shout out, first off, to our friends at Seattle Cocktail Club mm. who provide the shots for us every single show, but also allowed us to oh. host two events with them this week. One of them was Carla Marie's event at the Columbia Tower. The other one was a whiskey tasting event that I did with um, Woodford Reserve Double Oaked Bourbon yesterday in Fremont. A lot of fun. So the much restaurant fun. we did it at was fantastic. The whiskeys and all the things that we tried with the whiskey and the bourbon was really, really good. We met a lot of cool people. Yeah. It was fun. So if you ever have a chance to I... go to a Seattle Cocktail Club event, please uh, go do that because they are a lot of fun. I had the whiskeys. Hold on. I That bag has things in it for me. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. But now I can't rim it. How am I going to rim this? I love the big plate. Uh, there was something you were just talking about, and it made me think of something. Not eggs. Saddle Cocktail Club. Here you go. Can you? Oh, how? Okay, here. We're going to do this. Martha said, Carla Marie, please come over so I can fix her nails. What's wrong with her nails? Oh, they're ratchet. Oh, okay. Don't judge me, man. <laughs> I can't afford a manicure. Uh, I'm going to lick my rim and dip it in there. Can you do the same thing? I can. Unicorn Cindy, thank you very much for the five gifted tier one subs. Appreciate that very much. You don't learn this in class with Seattle Cocktail Club, I promise. So I have to lick my rim? That's weird. There oh, that's go. what I want to talk about, Lisa. Thank you. What? Well, I think we don't have to use this salt anymore. Sugar. Sugar. That's why I did that. Um, it was announced today that Ryan Seacrest is leaving the Kelly and Ryan show. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And I was like, immediately, let's get Anthony like campaigning to be on the show. I think it would be hilarious. No. Then um, it was announced that her husband, Mark Consuelos, is her co-host. Like, not for fun. Definitively. Like forever? That's it. The Kelly and, and Mark rip a show. That'll be interesting. And I'm like, you know what? Everyone's just ripping us off these days. And also, I love that ABC fired two people who were dating yeah. to hire a husband and wife. It's the same company? Yeah. Maybe they knew that was coming and they didn't want to be the show that was like all couples all the time. Yeah. You know? But Wait, I. Wait. So what is the schedule? I don't understand the schedule because here on the West Coast, we get like a slightly different right? ABC is. schedule. Because don't they, wasn't that couple, the couple that's dating, they're Good Morning America, right? No. Yes. GMA3. Good Morning America, yes. So when does Kelly and Ryan air? After that. They're an afternoon show? No, 9 a.m. Wait, is Kelly and Ryan not ABC? I, yeah, it I, is. I'm right. So it goes from the, the G, GMA3 to Kelly and Ryan? I guess, but GMA, yeah, GMA3 is third hour, 9 a.m. But wait, that doesn't make sense. I don't know. I don't know how any of these shows go. I do know that when we get Kelly and Ryan, it's uh, later in the day. Like, it's after this show is over. Mm -hmm. And it's not a good show. It wasn't, or I should say, it wasn't a good show. Oh. I would try to get through that first segment that they would do. And maybe we're not much better. I'm not saying that we would, like, go they, crush okay, them. Just so everyone's saying, yeah. GMA 3, is, 3 airs at 12 or 1. So what is the schedule? Who's first? <laughs> Kelly and Ryan. Okay. So, good morning, America comes back at the afternoon. None of this makes sense to me. Okay. But, uh... All I'm saying is... What? They're just trying to be us. Yeah, I mean, I would... I don't know if we are the, the standard bearer for, for anything, for any sort of show. But, I'm but God you, bless them if that's what it. their goal is. One day. Oh, okay. So the GMA three is like a bonus afternoon version of GMA. So Al Roker stays all day to do that show. No, thank you. Okay, here. Okay, so Jen gave us the the schedule in the chat. Let me put this on the screen for a but second. But is it the same? I bet you it's not the same for us. Jen says GMA is seven to nine. Kelly and Ryan is nine to ten. Tamarin Hall, I don't even know who that is. Is ten to eleven. Then the View is eleven to noon, and then noon to one. Oh, and then new news from 12 to 1, then GMA 3 from 1 to 2. Wow. When is GMA 2? <laughs> I don't think there is. The, there was a, there's no, so they go from GMA to GMA 2, 3? Oh. I think Tamron Hall might have been GMA 2. <laughs> none of this. The makes, second hour. None of this makes sense. Oh, wait, sense. Al Roker's NBC. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> none of this makes sense. So they go from GMA, then they have a bunch of other shows, then they do GMA 3. But what was I watching that Al Roker was on with the, the people that got fired? For the mailman, GTA 5 is better than GMA 3. You're 100% right. I can't wait till, and I know ESPN did it for a little bit. They had like a Madden league. GTL. But um, I can't wait till a real, you know, traditional broadcaster starts streaming video games or some, some sort of Twitch-like content. It'll happen. One of these big streamers is going to is going to sign a deal with NBC or someone. And that'll be the end. And then everyone's going to want to be on Twitch officially. Carla Marie, cheers to you. Oh my God. 
This is our last Valentine's Day shot. Cheers to everyone who supported the stream this morning. And it's a red hot Valentine. To our friends. Oh, there's sugar everywhere. Everywhere. Now. Uh, cheers to our friends at Seattle Cocktail Club. Mm-mm. That is spicy. Uh, can you put this over there, please? Oh, over there. That works. Mm-hmm. Just try not to get sugar everywhere. Oh, and a, a sweetheart. Sweetheart. Uh, only you, says mine. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. You know that video? Mine says dream. All right. Oh, for the mailman said Cedar Point here in Ohio, that is the uh, amusement park, is opening a big esports arena this year. There are a lot of people that are, there are a lot of places that are doing that. Uh, Vegas really jumped on board early with esports. And at the Luxor, I think maybe at multiple places, they have esports arenas. And Luxor's is uh, it's sponsored by HyperX, which oh, is, yeah, yeah. they make a lot of the peripherals for gaming. So headphones. Well, m- peripherals are side view. Well, they're called peripherals. So like this, a mouse is a peripheral. As far as I know. It's an I could accessory. Be, I could be wrong. Uh, Scotty said Luxor's is huge. It is very big. And it, it's pretty cool. You can actually, they have the stadium in the back, but the entrance into the stadium, once you get into the place, is just like a gaming studio, so you can actually rent time and play whatever game you want on some of their really high-powered cool. PCs and use all of their stuff. It's really, really cool. We were going to cool. try to stream from there, remember? Yeah, there was an option. It seemed like it was going to happen, and then it kind of... Uh, well, they didn't open through. the arena early enough. Yeah, that was that was the problem. Yeah. Maybe one day. But there, I think, you know, esports, not that they haven't taken off yet, but... I still don't think they are fully mainstream. They're profitable. They're very profitable. They're not fully mainstream yet, but that is going to change in the next couple of years. Oh, yeah. My brother sent me, um, I think it was over this past summer, there was some sort of international competition, maybe in Brazil, that took place in an actual stadium. Oh, that was crazy. And people like took to the streets, chanting there was like big upsets, and you have national teams now yeah. that are going head-to-head in It'll video be the Olympics games. Olympics in our lifetime. I don't I don't even think I think they would have their own Olympics. I don't even think they need to latch on to the regular Olympics. Because well, I think the I think the Olympic Committee would mess it up. I'm a, is Beat Saber a thing? I'm sure someone has a Beat Saber competition I'm somewhere. Do that. Let's see. If you don't know what Beat Saber is, think like um if you go back wait, can you refresh that for me? What this is this website did it not update for today? I don't know. Here, the morning. Morning show podcast. Oh, come on. What? All posts. Doesn't. Oh, today's isn't up there. Yeah. Why not? You got me. Oh. Oh! Let me see. Beat Saber. Video. Uh, let's national. Tournament. Let's see if they have anything. The Beat Saber World Cup. USA versus Canada. The Grand Finals. That's a YouTube video. I'm not going to click on that right now. Are there any Beat Saber tournaments? Beat Saber League is a nonprofit organization that hosts professional league-style tournaments for the VR rhythm game Beat Saber. This is a real thing. I wouldn't be very good at it. They have a Twitter account. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Get out of here. Let me put this on the screen. Um, I think this will put some. There we go. Nope, not yet. There it is. So there is a Beat Saber League. It has 400 followers. BeatSaberLeague.com. The most competitive and longest running Beat Saber tournament series, Carla Marie. All right, I'm in. Are you going to join? Yep, only if I, I mean, can just do follow-up boy songs. They only have 400 followers, so I don't know if it's like that big. But I wonder how this works because do you get to pick your songs? I don't know. I mean, they do have their... Competitions USA versus Canada in the finals that is on YouTube, so we can watch it later and okay. see how it works. So, if you don't know what Beat Saber is, um, it's part of the VR headset world, and you wear these things on your hand very yeah. much like a, a Wii situation, mm-hmm. right? If you play the Nintendo Wii, and it's kind of like that combined with if you remember DDR Dance Dance Revolution when you would go to the arcade and you would like 
I think of it as I think it's more closely related to like Fruit Ninja or Guitar Hero. It's that idea. It's like of Fruit like, Ninja and Guitar Hero put together. So instead of like stomping or slicing, you are taking like your beat saber, your lightsaber, your lightsaber, <laughs> and you're just like doing what it's telling you to do. So it's like up, right, down, swirl, whatever it says, and but it's to the beat of a song. Mm. And and when you start learning the song and you know the beat, it's like. You get it. You're doing a little dance. Yeah. It's fun. We've posted videos of it. We should do it again. Uh, Fred the Mailman said that his friend's son made $240,000 winning an Injustice 2 tournament. He was the best Batman in the country. Okay. This is it. Beat Saber is going to be my thing. I mean, there is a lot of money to be made in that world. Even if you're not winning tournaments. Even if you're just this, getting sponsored. All this Orange Theory training is to be fit for <laughs> Beat Saber. It will. If you play a couple rounds of Beat Saber, especially if it's on like one of the higher levels, you will start sweating. So then like what kind of workout do I put on on my watch? Cardio. Hit? No, I think it would be cardio. I don't think that's an option because it's like specific cardio, like running, rowing. There's not like what is there like a Zumba class option? Oh, yeah. I would I would okay. pick that. All right. We're doing it because it's probably the most similar. Charge it up. It's probably the most similar to one like a group dance class, right? Can we stream that? We have. Yeah, no, we streamed the zombie thing. I wasn't here for that. I no, but we, we can stream anything from from the VR headset. If you go to Twitch right now, actually. But let's, where are we going to, like, we can't do it in this room. We'll no, like, we'd have to read. We'd have to, like, restructure this room a little bit. Or downstairs. Downstairs is an option. Um, If we go to the Twitch website right now. How do I get back to, here we go, back to Twitch. There's definitely got, there's got to be, let me put this on the screen, a VR. Is it on the screen? It should be. It doesn't look like it. Oh, you get on, let me turn that off. What? Huh? There we go. This little fancy thing. Oh, there's a fitness gaming setting on the Apple Watch. I didn't see the user there you go. before Anthony moved away. Thank you for that. Esports. Just search are? Beat Saber. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Let's see what people are doing out here. Right there. Where? Which one? Click that. That's it. This one? No, click. No, go back. It's actual people. <laughs> Mother of. <laughs> Move it. You, I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm not going to be a dick about this, but there's something about the way that you specifically, yeah. the way you search. The, I, when I tell you, if there was a competition about how to search and, and you navigate websites and use Google, I would win. Sure, yeah, good. We're following Pete Saber. Oh, wait, we were following it. Okay, these are, people are all live right now. All right. I wish I showed you the song they were doing. This person's got 10 viewers. Let's, let's hang out with them for a while. Memory. There we go. <laughs> the now context. We Sorry for that. Um. Play, dude. What's this? Laser, 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 laser. Oh, he's playing. Okay. <laughs> For a minute, I thought this was our chat, but I'm reading his, and I was like, "Look at all this." Oh, you got. Oh, he's. Oh, this is all hard. This person would definitely beat you, Carla. Whoa. I can't play that fast. Not a chance in hell. My brain doesn't work that fast. Nope. Are you supposed to jump over those landmine looking things? This is impressive. I now understand Twitch. <laughs> I could watch this guy all day. <laughs> Not a chance in hell I could do any. What? Wait, what is he? How do you? Oh, you just got to put your hands up, I bet. Over the mines. Uh -oh. <gasps> and then when those walls come, you have to get stay in between them. Ah! This is good. I, can we just watch this guy's whole round? This is what we do. Bring out the laser, laser, <laughs> laser, How? Do you know this song? Uh, I've never heard this one. So, Beat Saber has their own music, but then you can also download music. This is crazy. You can download music packs up. as well. So, like, we have a Linkin Park pack. We have some BTS songs. Fall Out Boy. Fall Out Boy. 
You know what? I'm charging up the uh, the headset. I have told you two weeks ago. <laughs> this guy, is wild. And he's like second Teletubbies as he's doing this. <laughs> Has he missed? No. Combo 164. 94 percent. This is insane. <laughs> he's having the time of his life. I promise once this guy's done, we'll we'll go back to our regular show. Programming. But this is very impressive. How does he go so fast? 93%. Oh, he did miss, by the way. Because now he's at a combo of 46. Uh, no, he did that one wrong. There's a minute left in the song? Or what this is, is that? Twitch yeah. Inception. Yeah. This is pretty wild. Any DMCA streaming this? Eh. Um, I don't believe so because most of the video like game the, songs the like it's a, the, are royalty free. The middle there? I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out once we're done. Bring out the lasers. <laughs> Ooh, a lot of people say emotion sickness. It's better when you have the headset on. Yeah, because you're the one that's causing the motion, which is a whole different experience. But I'm actually okay, and I get very bad motion sickness. All right. Let's go back. He's almost done. He's got 30 seconds left. All right. I think. How is he so calm? Imagine we get DMCA'd for this. We go to jail. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Yeah, I wonder if the video games, like, clear their songs with Twitch so that it doesn't become yeah, an issue. Yeah, but, like, Fall Out Boy is not cleared with Twitch. Here, you know, let's... We can mute him for a little bit. And now we're just watching it. No one else is hearing this. Thank you. It's way more fun with, like, yeah. a real song. I want to hear what he's saying. Make him. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. We are done with him. That was... I would rather hear his reaction to the game than anything. That was impressive, though. Give him a lot of credit for that one. Woo. Okay. That was intense. I, I so you think you could take that guy on in a yeah. Beat Saber championship? Uh, Part of the brain? I just put his name in here. No, EDM is a real song genre. Slap a zombie. I don't know where you got that from. What Anthony was saying is that a lot of the songs on Beat Saber are specifically made for the video game mm -hmm. so that they don't have um, royalty issues yeah. or maybe but they clear they it might. with twitch that or might. something and we'll find out and then we just take it out yeah is it real it is real oh, that is a real song that's what he did. yes they're all real songs <laughs> but some of them don't have uh royalty like they're royalty free meaning you can stream them or because it is in a video game it's okay on twitch youtube is where we'll probably have the issue yeah but. and we'll, we'll figure it out and with youtube the interesting thing is when you do play a song what they'll do um, if it's a song that's like registered with YouTube, you end up splitting your royalties or giving your ro royalties for that video mm. to the original song creator. Yeah. Basically, that's how that works. So we'll figure it out. We don't have any DCMA strikes, so we'll be okay. Yeah, we're good. But that was like wildly impressive that he I was going if that, that guy fast. Does BTS Dynamite. I'm sure he's very good at it. I've done BTS Dynamite on. Not the hardest level, like one below that. And I still get a pretty good score. It's in the, the 90s in terms of, you know, hit rate or whatever they, however they score it. Okay. Um, but back to our, there we go. It was there. Back to our list. Let me take this off for us. There we go. Um, the first thing we got to discuss, and we're half an hour into our show already. So that, that kind of derailed us. But according to science... Men are getting bigger down there. Yeah. The interesting thing, though, and this goes back to the science of how that thing works down there, is uh, the size of it kind of means nothing. Because in terms of fertility and testosterone, men's, the number has declined over time. Yeah, so. So there's really no correlation between how fertile you are, how. Big. And how big it is or how much testosterone you have or how manly you are and the size of your piece. So what they're saying is that over 29 years 
according to research, yeah. over 29 years, the male part has grown 24%. Like, that is a lot. Well, yes like, that and no. that sucks for women 29 years ago compared to women now. I mean, but it could also suck if that's a, if that's a trend that continues. It could also be worse for women in the future. Because it's too big? Because, yeah, maybe it just gets to a point where it's like none of this is going to work anymore. Okay, so... What Anthony was saying is about how, like, scientists are saying that this could be, yes, there is no correlation, mm-hmm. but the fact that any time there is a massive change like this with any part of the reproductive system, yeah. something's wrong, is what So, the for the past is. 30 years, something has been something wrong. Something has been trending wrong, and while mm. the size isn't necessarily a correlation with the function of what goes on inside something is off because there shouldn't be this much of a change. Okay. So what what are they, they have no idea why they're not sure. Hmm. I mean, hormone, I mean, I think people in general are bigger though, right? Like we've gotten heavier as a society. True. I I believe we've also gotten taller as a society over the past hundred or so years. So you would think if we are getting taller and heavier, that that part would also grow at some point. One of the things it it did say was that how like women we know over time have started to go through puberty earlier. Yes. Men could also, boys could also be experiencing the same thing, which means that you have more of a time for your body to grow. So instead of hitting puberty at 13, when everything like that starts to grow, you hit it at 11. That's two more years of your growing life. Kind of wild. So, the question, I guess, well, no no one, here's the problem, is no one right now would be able to, unless you were seeing a different thing every year for the last 30 years, you probably wouldn't have any idea that it's gotten bigger. Like, oh, as a population. Right. No, what, what would you? Um, but the, the other interesting thing is, why were these researchers measuring penises like what is it just for like overall metrics just so, so like every year there's got there's a group of people that has to measure penises i guess like, no, what was it in 2019 it was 2019 uh, there's they probably measure everything um i've read people inject them with botox and other things says vicky there is more that you can do with your thing now to either enhance, enhance it or i don't want to say protect it uh What's the word I'm looking for? Maintain. Maintain it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's like also... what I well, like I'm doing with Botox and uh, facial today. Yeah, like so 30 years ago, your face would have been completely different. That's why you moisturize <laughs> and take care of your skin in your 20s because you want it to stay the way it is. Why? What is the reason um, for injecting? Because I know it's a thing injecting Botox into your your piece. I don't know because what Botox does is essentially relaxes the muscles. So that they don't move. Yeah. And then you don't get the wrinkle. Botox for men. No, don't Google Botox for men. Because it's actually the number one thing men get in their... Botox The number for one men. Um, like procedure or anything of that world for men is Botox. Oh. For their face. Penile yeah. Botox consists of simply oh, two injections in, into the corpus cavernosa. Didn't know I had one of those things. Helping to paralyze the muscles responsible for the shrinkage reflex and increase the production of new blood vessels, which l- makes me believe that it, if anything, it's at least not getting smaller. I don't know if that's going to expand it at all. But it says it it paralyzes the muscles muscles responsible for the shrinkage reflex. Does that yeah. mean that you like it's always not small? Uh, that's a problem. No, that I I don't know. That's it. That's an interesting question. I wonder if I know anyone who's gotten penile Botox. Boys don't talk about that. You would never know. Guys don't but talk I, but about But I wish this. if anyone in the chat has gotten it, like seriously. No one's going to say that. Why not? Men don't talk about this kind of stuff. Like women only recently started talking about their issues publicly. Yeah. When it comes to reproductive, like whether it's miscarriage or having mm. a PCOS or endometriosis. What is a PCOS? Like, 
uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Oh, okay. Like things like that we didn't know about. Well, we knew about, obviously, but unless it, you were diagnosed with it or it happened to you, you didn't know what happened to other people. You yeah. assume, but you had no idea. But it's like one in eight women have a miscarriage. Like that's an insane number. And I actually was talking to a friend about this who was trying to get pregnant and they've gone through all the tests and it's not her. It's her husband. Mm -hmm. And she's like, it's not only the woman. And we've yeah. now because women have been so vocal about saying Yes, this happened to me. This happened to me. It seems like it's only the woman when really half the time the problem is also the man. Yeah. But we don't like what guy's going to be like, well, I'm the reason we can't get pregnant. Yeah. You're not going to hear that. Not for a lot of years. Well, you know, I we did have a friend. Um, They were having trouble getting uh, getting pregnant at first. So for their first child, they went through all the steps. Everyone got tested. They ended up. uh going to a, a fertility doctor and ended up getting pregnant. But I remember talking to the guy in the relationship and he was saying he was nervous the day that he got tested to see if it was his swimmers basically that were the mm -hmm. issue. And I was asking him if like what he was hoping to find out. And it was a really interesting answer and a really heartfelt answer because he was telling me how he wished it was his fault. He was like, I, I went in there and I was praying from the time I got tested to the time we got the results that it was my problem because his wife had kind of mentally ran herself into the ground thinking that she was the problem. And like, it's, and maybe and because that, she was a stay at home mom for, or she was a stay at home wife at the time, oh. she felt like she couldn't do her part of the relationship. It sucks. Um, Eventually, it turned out it wasn't him, but then, oddly enough, they got pregnant, I don't want to call it naturally, but, like, the normal way Without. on their second kid anyway, so everyone was happy by the end of it, but it was just a really interesting, heartfelt conversation I had with a male friend. It's awesome. Who That's talked important. about how he went through the testing, and it, it took, I don't know, just a couple days to get mm -hmm. the results, but he was really, like, rooting for his, his swimmers to be the problem. Yeah. So that his I, wife didn't have to carry that burden. And there's a lot of things like women will be like, I got to start taking prenatal vitamins. I got to like get my body ready. Men yeah. need to do the same thing, but they often don't. There are certain things you shouldn't be eating, things you should be eating, more sleep. Like obviously all these things. And it's, it's crazy because now I get all of this in my feed because I looked up three baby things <laughs> when I was at my sister's. And now I'm just like, whatever. I'm all in. I'm going to get as educated as possible on this. And it's fascinating to learn the simplest of things, like what, like um, there was something the other day that said using lube could actually kill sperm before it gets to you, and you're like, I can't uh, get pregnant, but really, you should be okay. There's like, and there's a million little things that are actual reasons why this couldn't be happening, opposed to just hearing the just relax, it'll happen. Yeah. Like there's a million things that could go into this, and it's like actually insanely hard to get pregnant. Even if everything is like completely working fine. You know what's interesting about the just relax, it'll happen? I wouldn't say just relax, it'll happen is good advice. But just relax is actually, and I know people don't want to hear this, just relax in certain situations is actually yes. good advice because stress hormones wreak havoc on your body. Oh. In, they, in every, in almost every single way. Every way. And saying just relax doesn't necessarily help. But when you realize that there are things you do in your life that stress you out or keep you from being in a relaxed state for like any period of time that you're not sleeping, you start realizing where you can make those adjustments and other parts, fat loss or weight loss in general, yeah. stress makes that almost impossible. I know. Um, getting pregnant too, having a child is not as easy nope. if you are stressed out. And that's, there are so many different factors to stress. It's not like, Oh, relax in your brain. No. There are different stress, stress factors, biological, stress. environmental stress and anxiety are the number one cause of the yeah. stomach ish, like mm -hmm. actual stomach diagnosis, yep. um, thing that I have. And then like, I've talked to my chiropractor about it, that he'll often see people that come back in for more appointments with having a painful flare up after they just went through something traumatic yep. in their life. And like your back hurts again. And I was like, this is why my back hurts so bad. When we had that <laughs> job with that crappy boss. And I do want to point out, um, 
Vicky said, just relax is the worst thing That's you can say saying. to someone going through infertility. Totally understand. Just relax and put your legs up. <laughs> um, uh. Lexi, uh, I had put it on the screen. I don't think you saw it, but she said uh, a little bit more. Something along the lines of, it's crazy that you guys are talking oh, about yeah. this because we it. just found out that we have to go through IVF treatment because of a problem with my husband. And it's nor like, this is normal. Mm-hmm. And I hate, like, it is because of a problem with him, but, like, it's almost the norm at this point in our lives, at this point in society, to not need assistance of some kind when trying to have a child, when trying to have a tiny little demon. So I want to put um, Martha's comment on the screen as well, because Martha's someone who's gone through it, can obviously speak to this way better than I can with the whole ro- the idea of stress. So Martha said, when we were trying to get pregnant, I was manic with my calendar and we were, uh, and when I was ovulating and making Mikey have sex at certain times, it effed us up big time. Then I stopped and just stay and just enjoyed being married. And then it happens. Well, if you remember Garrett from Elvis, Elvis Duran in the morning show, mm-hmm. when they were trying to get pregnant with their first child, he talked about this on the air. So this isn't like a secret thing. He, um, there was a time when he would have to come in super early to the show at like, or he did an overnight shift. I'm yes. sorry. So he was at the Z100 radio station in New York City from like midnight to 4 a.m. And then Elvis' show started at 6. But he said the one day he got a text from his wife, Allie, that was like, N- like we have to do this now. <laughs> so he left the station at like 4 a.m. <laughs> they had sex. And then he came back at, for Elvis' show at 6 a.m. You do what you got to do. Yeah. It becomes just like a, like imagine telling your kid. Yeah, we just had to get it done to make you. Well, I, I can see how a lot of people are saying it in the chat. Um, it, that kind of lifestyle, even if it's necessary, definitely ruins the mood. Yeah. Which then makes it probably harder to do the thing you're trying to do. Yeah, because cavemen definitely weren't tracking on a wall. I no, bet. but they were also probably just doing it like because it whenever. Felt like they needed their bodies were like, we need to do this to survive. Here's or- the other thing. If you read um Sapiens. Mm. I haven't read Sapiens 2. I have read Sapiens 1. And the Sapiens is basically, uh, I think it's pitched as a brief history of humankind. And one of the things that, like, Neanderthals and old cavemen used to do um, before we had these, like, societal structures was everyone basically just did everyone. That's crazy. And your chances of getting pregnant, just like in the animal kingdom, are higher the more you do it and the more partners you have. And then from a societal standpoint, from like a, a group survival standpoint, more men felt protective over the baby once it came out because no one knew who the father was. So everyone kind of took the role. And this, I'm, I'm talking thousands, like 10, yeah, 15. Yeah, not now. <laughs> Don't just go out right now and start. 30,000 years ago. That's cool. But listen, here's the cool thing about being a woman. If you're you are at a point in your life where you're like, I don't have anyone. I want to have a baby. You can just find some eligible suitors, go out every night, hook up with them. I mean, if you want to go caveman style. I never tell them. <laughs> if you want to go caveman style. Recommend. That's what you could do. Uh, oh, my God. What? It's me, Meech. It's a tough process. One day, I just started crying in the middle of it and stopped, and that was the month we got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> the tears made it happen. Oh, my goodness. Um, I don't know how we got to... Fertility and penis whatnot, size. but through penis size, but well, through I penis mean, that's size. how it works. But uh, we are going to move on from that. And the next Hold thing. On. No. What? We're stopping for one second. What happened? B-Delp said, I'm going to be considered geriatric pregnancy. I've cried a lot. Listen to me. At this point in time, we're all going to be geriatric pregnancies. Oh, some people are more likely to be considered that now. Most, I will say, we are on the verge at this point with our generation where most of us will be considered geriatric pregnancies i also would like to say that i believe at some point in our lifetime they're gonna change that word because we're all like what the hell is this word well wasn't it um high risk or something originally i think it might have been because you're over the age of 34 which i feel like geriatric is still better than high risk because high risk just sounds terrifying i would rather be the high risk i don't know (laughs) high risk because you can still have a very healthy geriatric pregnancy you just have to get checked a little more often that's all they're really telling you to do which is actually very nice, I've heard, because when you get pregnant at like 25, they're like, all right, see you in six weeks or whatever yeah. it is. Don't come into the doctor before then. But when you're geriatric, you get to go in right away. 
Yeah. And you get all these extra tests. So the adults and the last person tell you to stop crying. Don't cry over that. Literally everything oh, it else. It is now being referred to as advanced maternal age. Okay. According well, like, to Diana 0509. I will, I will um, say that from now on. Well, since we're on the topic of geriatric, we're going to skip over to turning 35. Okay, go for it. So I was at Trader Joe's getting my wine, which is my new favorite thing because it's my favorite wine is $7. And that's like unlocked new life level. It's amazing. So I was at Trader Joe's. I had to show them my ID. And the guy was like, huh. I did that math right. Big three, five coming up soon. Oh, oh and, yes, crap. Your birthday is in like less than a month. I realized that three, five is my birthday also. So oh, I'm yeah, turning yeah. three, five on three, five. It's like a weird version of your uh, golden birthday. It's a rose right? gold birthday. You just made that up, didn't you? No. You just made that up. A little bit. <laughs> so I was like, yep, it's coming up. And he's like, so how do you feel about it? And I was like, well, I mean, I don't care feel the exact same as I did last year. Like, it doesn't bother me. He's like, that's a good way to think about it. Because, like, the next big birthday you have is, like, what, 100? And I'm After like, 35? I'd say 50 is probably a big birthday. Also, 40's got, like, every decade you make it do is a big birthday. And I was like, I, guess I mean. 40's a big one. Yeah. I was like, yeah. And then something, a girl showed up when we were talking. And I said something like, the other option is I'm dead. That's so what I always say. I don't care. Yep. And he was like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I want to be like, dude, so you just think after 35, that's it? He made yes. it sound like I turned 35 <laughs> and that my life is over. Yeah, that's, I mean, I used to feel like that for a very long time. I don't. That's sad. Yeah. I, well, I used to just be like, I don't care whatever happens after 35 happens. Now I'm, I'm, I think differently. But when you're, was the person probably in their 20s? I don't remember what he looked like. Okay. You don't, well, this was yesterday, no? On Mon- when was Valentine's Day? Monday. Tuesday. Well, this was two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't remember what the person looked you like? You might have had a mask on. I don't know. Uh, Lisa said, but age is... Well, oh, I just it left the screen. Age is just a number, so I'm not really bothered by it. Yes. It's one of the hard things about trying to read things on all of the screens that we have is they move at different uh, I know, paces. It's like- so it's hard to figure out where we are. Uh, Kelsey just said, I just realized my husband turned 35 today. Lost track of his age. <laughs> well, happy birthday to... Your husband. He's played a game on the Morning Show podcast. Birthday, Even though he's not here listening. Erica, what? You know what? Made by Erica, that birthday song goes to you as well. Just turned 44 yesterday. You are not 44. Why not? Because Lenny's going to be 43 like on Monday. This is crazy. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, in my mind, Erica was literally younger than I am. I've FaceTimed, I've Zoomed yeah. with her. We've just, like, I've known her for a very long time. Like, there's no way. And even if you did seem 44, okay, that's great. That's your age. I do think that at some point in your life, your attitude, and at most points in your life, really, but um, your attitude becomes way more important than your age. Oh, yeah. Right? Because everyone knows someone, one of their friends, who basically, like, aged themselves out at 26 because they just became... A homebody. They didn't want to meet any new people. They they stopped experiencing new things for whatever reason, whether they mm-hmm. got married and had kids or whether that's just where they're, they wanted to take their lives. But you also know someone who's probably late 40s, early 50s, who is still meeting new people, still yeah. going out, still experiencing new things. And it becomes more of your attitude than your age. How you treat your body, how you treat your free time, those are the things that really – matter yep. as you get older. And I know people made fun of uh Scary at Elvis's show for a very long time because Scary will still I, yeah, I go out to clubs and he'll stu- still do all of the things that for whatever reason uh his peers in that studio they were feel jealous. like he is not supposed to be doing anymore. And I do think jealousy creeps into that a lot like you've just mentioned Carla Marie because a lot of the people that would make fun of Scary for those things were people who were more settled in their domestic lives, if you will. They were probably married, had kids, and couldn't do those things anymore for whatever mental uh, roadblocks they set up yeah. in their heads. And obviously there are limitations when you do have kids and you've got to take care yeah, of but if, other if, beings. If you can have someone come watch your kids for you to go to on a vacation or something, you can also have them watch your kid once every three months so you can go to a club like the old days if that's what yeah. you want to do. If you have 
family in town to do that or if you can afford to find right. a sitter or whatever. There's obviously a financial thing there. But as I got older, I started realizing, you know, I think Scary had the right idea. Yeah, Peter Pan syndrome. I'm all for it. I don't know if I, I would call it Peter Pan syndrome. I know that's what like the, the popular thing to call it is. Like you never want to grow but up. But I have Peter. Then I, I, and I say this all the time and people are like, oh, man, of Peter Pan syndrome. I'm like, guys, I have that. Like, I don't want to grow up. I don't want to have kids right now. I'm too young to have kids. Like, that's where my head is. Well, I think a lot of people connect growing up to some of the life mile, lifetime milestones they want to achieve, right? If they, if, the, if they want to get married or if they want to have kids or if they want to own a house, that means growing up. Yeah. But I don't know if we should be marrying those things, right? You can get older. You can do all of the, all of those things, but you don't have to necessarily yeah. grow up from a fun standpoint. You can still go out and do the things you want to do when you can do them. You know, you don't have to become a, a, a homebody just because you got married. You don't have to not experience new things because you have kids. But no one's telling you you can't or like when people shame parents yeah. or moms for doing certain things like, oh, she's going to have a glass of wine. Like, that's a big thing. No, no one's saying like, oh, a dad had a beer at dinner. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about being pregnant. I'm talking about after. <laughs> um, I'm in the middle of Elijah Schlesinger's book, and she's actually talking a lot about that. Like, about what? A lot of just what society thinks and why do like society thinks this. But why the hell is that a thing? Okay. And it's like a lot of that. And I really, really love it. Um, I think it's called. The, the thing is, I'll I'll tell you the next week what the book yeah okay uh b delp says guys i just have to say i love this community cmna you guys always brighten my day found you guys on twitch when covid started cool. but used to listen on edms never change and keep chasing your dreams oh thank you i just saw the community you, part you and put, I why you put it on the screen i did already th twice oh okay we're <laughs> just on a rant it's fine um okay what lid the squid she said try i'm assuming she uh, trying to start an art business, but my mother-in-law keeps sending me job applications. No. Just block her. The mother-in-law? Yeah. I don't think it's no. that easy. <laughs> I, no. I think a lot of people wish it was that easy, but it you is not that You can just say, easy. thanks, I really appreciate this. I'm actually doing, you know, explain how you're starting your business. Um, and I also have job alerts set up. I'm good. Mm -hmm. You can say something like that. You can say it in a nice way, but also don't use words like, I'm just going to try this art thing out. You say it like, I am doing this. And it's very matter of fact, this is what I'm doing. Don't use like the wishy-washy words. And I think mm -hmm. you can figure them out when you're actually typing out a text or whatever you're saying to the person. Yeah. Well, part of that, and I think a lot of people do this. Part of that issue and I don't know how your, uh, what was the account? Lid. Lid. Lid the squid. We're going to call you squid. Um, squid. I don't know if this is how you're approaching it when you have discussions with your mother-in-law. But one of the reasons people don't have confidence in our plans is that when we present them, we present them in a coy way where we don't want to seem overly uh, yeah. um, confident. Because we've been trained that like overconfidence means you have a big ego or whatever. If you present something with confidence, people will usually accept it with that same confidence. It is a very much – it is a very give and take yes. situation there. What you put out there is normally what gets given back. Like for us, I'm never, I'm never like, oh, we just do a show on Twitch and we just like do a podcast. I'm like – we host a morning show yeah. on Twitch. We host the morning show podcast. It's five days a week. So we do that. And we also have a clothing line. It's very, it, it takes a while to get to that point. Mm -hmm. oh, but yeah, absolutely. it is what you, and no matter what it is, like whether it's a job or a hobby or something, if you're not confident in it, no one else is going to be. It goes back to, if you don't represent your own brand, no one else is going to support it. Yeah. And vice versa. So just keep that in mind when telling her to back the F. Yeah, so uh, Karina from New York said, this is great, I'll put it on the screen. Remove, I think, I wish, I hope, and does that make sense from statements? I do, I, have I say, does that make sense in a lot of my conversations? I don't know if necessarily about my career, but. I don't really feel like I feel do. like I ramble a lot. 
So I will stop myself down if I realize I've been talking for too long. And I will literally ask the person, like, am I making sense here? Does this, are we, are we going in the right direction? But yeah, if you start removing those words um, when you're talking about your goals and your aspirations mm-hmm. and your career, um, it usually helps you have more confidence in what you're doing as well. Uh, Lenny brings up something that I've called you out before, Anthony. He what? said, don't refer to things as a little business. I call everything little. You do. But it's like, Got oh, there's a little. There's little oh, talk about your little job with the Seahawks. Like, he would just do that. And I'm like, yeah, dude, yeah. ew, stop doing that. Yeah. But um, when we were doing My Day Friday, it was probably 2015. There was a list of mm. words to remove from your vocabulary. And I had that printout. I moved to Seattle with that printout, had it on my desk. I recently like, threw it out, but I have a photo of it somewhere on my phone. But one of the words that I really worked to remove was the word just. Mm-hmm. In speaking, and I, it's still because it comes out naturally, but I just think we should do this. Instead of saying that, it's we should do this yeah. or I believe we should do this. And so, Here's when you, why. When you use words like I just think, it's like, okay, well, you don't really, like you're not being confident about yeah. it. You're not being, this is what you think you should do. I also realized uh, Lid the Squid 511 never really asked us for advice. We just started shouting some into microphones, uh, but they did say, thank you. It's pretty hard to discuss things with her, but I appreciate all of your advice. Uh, unless that was just a way to be like, guys, stop giving me advice. Yeah, I don't probably, care. Probably you're right. <laughs> That's the next thing we'll talk about when people start giving you advice. There's also uh, Martha just said she realized we were twinning and we're wearing the same shirt. Me and Martha. Oh, cute. It's a good one. I haven't worn this one in a while. I but... wonder if Martha's muscles are so big that they are also eating her t-shirt. I wonder if she has a uh, pit sweat like I do because – felt it (laughs) these things are well you put your hand in my pit that is a you problem i never asked you to do that uh heather yes i started removing anything that made me feel small i love it own it you know what you were doing yeah you know it is interesting especially when you are in like a the you know job application process the interviewing process or what we're doing is we're trying to grow the show and have different partners there's this weird line that you have to balance on. They have to tiptoe down because a lot of people have been conditioned to avoid people who are overly confident because at one end of the spectrum, you end up with like a Kanye West, right? You end up with someone who literally does not think anything they do is wrong. And that's gotten, I mean, he, he rode that to success for a very long time and then it just, it exploded. It went overboard. But we're all now in this place where we're trying to figure out how to present ourselves as confident professionals who know what we're doing or at least have a plan of what we want to do Mm -hmm. without scaring the people that we are trying to get to hire us or that we are trying to partner with. It's, it really is a tightrope walk. It is very difficult to do it um, without scaring off some weak-minded people. And unfortunately, in a lot of situations, you need some of those weak-minded people who are afraid of confident humans Mm -hmm. uh, to get what you want because they are gatekeepers to an industry or to a career or to a company. It's tough. It is. There is a, there's a, a balance to find Mm -hmm. and you won't find it right away, but you will. Yeah. Uh, And Claire says, this is a very good point. You can be confident with still being kind and compassionate. And yes. that's always the goal, obviously. Very good. And what did you put up here for Martha Carlemer? I went to my first dance cardio class having the most anxiety in the world. I said, F it, and just went with it. It was so fun. That's awesome. That's all. That's, I mean, especially when you're trying new things, that is the attitude. I don't do well dancing to have. like classes, but. Uh, Mellow FM said this topic is a touchy one for me. Thanks for talking about it. Do you want, if you want, you can explain um, in a little more detail why it's a touchy topic for this you. It's not therapy. No, but we can talk. Um, we'll jump back into that if you feel like doing that Mellow FM. But the next thing on the list, let's go to Restaurant Puker, Carla Marie. Okay. Uh, let me just say that the wrong text conversation is going to send people. Okay. So when we get there. Okay, so Restaurant Puker. On Tuesday night for Valentine's Day dinner, Anthony took me to a sushi restaurant we had never been to. And as soon as we got there, I had to pee. Like, didn't even sit down. Yeah. Took off my jacket, went to the bathroom. Get in the bathroom. And the woman or girl next to me in the stall was puking. I like that someone put the uh, the Carla Marie puke emote on the screen. It wasn't me for a change. (laughs) And I was like, 
Oh. And I felt so bad also because I didn't want to be like, like when you're in that situation, a lot of times you don't want anyone talking to you. It's like, leave me alone, whatever. So I like waited to see where she was in the process. Was she almost done? Whatever. So I finished doing what I'm doing. I washed my hands. I'm just like, hey, do you need anything? Are you okay? And she was like, no, thank you so much. I'm totally fine. But I could see like her shoes or her pants, whatever it was. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take note. Oh, like the color? Oh, who this girl is? Because that's how I used to cheat when I was little playing thumbs up. Always. Yeah, you never look at their played an honest game of thumbs no, up. No, never. In my life. And I sit back down, and then she comes walking out of the bathroom, and it was the poor hostess. And this girl was like 16. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like. In reality, as we're older now, she was probably 25. Probably. <laughs> she looked super young, and I just felt so bad because she probably wasn't. Emb- I don't know why she's throwing up, right? So now I'm like, does she have a hangover? It's not, I don't feel bad, mm-hmm. but it's also a Tuesday and at 7 p.m. Yeah, but I feel like in the, the service industry, like yeah, Mondays are usually out. industry nights. This looks very much like she was in high school or college. Okay. She could still go out and yeah. get drunk. But then I was like, did she have the sushi for lunch? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, it no. is interesting. It's, it sucks when you, th- you know someone is sick and they are at a restaurant. But she was, I'm telling you, she was very young. And I can tell that she, she probably didn't want to tell the people she was working with that she was sick. Maybe whatever. she couldn't afford it. Whatever. She probably worked for like another 30 minutes. I was just like watching her the whole time. So if she went back in there, I was probably going to go in. And I was like, please don't go back in. Oh, into the bathroom. Yeah. And she was fine. But part of me was going to order. I didn't know what to do. I was like, do I order a ginger ale and just go give it to her? <laughs> but I didn't want, I didn't want her to get in trouble Mm -hmm. or feel weird or whatever. So I was like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, she could be pregnant, Amanda. But again, as I ranted about a few weeks ago, just because a woman vomits or is nauseous doesn't mean they're pregnant. There are a lot of reasons that she could have been ill in that moment. She could have been actually sick. Um, She could have been pregnant. She could have been hungover. And Ashley in the chat said she could have been really stressed. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's maybe she's trying to get out of that job and she had a huge job interview the next day. Maybe. And she was just super stressed and puking. Or maybe because it was Valentine's Day, maybe she got broken up with it and she was so sick she threw up. Or that. There's a lot of reasons. It is unsettling, though, <sighs> okay. when you go to a restaurant. What? No. And you see someone ill. Yeah. That's the last thing you want to see at a restaurant. I literally walked back to the table. I was like, someone's barfing in the bathroom. Yep. Um, Angela also says just because someone vomits doesn't mean they're sick or contagious. Correct. And I think the fact that she was the hostess and didn't actually seat us. No. Because she was, she in, was the in the bathroom throwing, throwing up. up. Someone else sat us. I mean, selfishly, I felt fine. Yeah. It's like, she's all the way over there. It's like a separate room, essentially, mm-hmm. from where the main dining room is. Actually, Martha's so right with this. She said, I've Skittles, instead of saying the word throw up, mm. um, from having period cramps. Oh, that could be there a thing, too. There are so many women that just, even not having the cramps, just their period makes them throw up. And it very much could have been that. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have in the chat here? Ooh, this I don't I don't know this about the food industry. If anyone can uh, talk speak to this, that would be beneficial. Karina from New York said, "I thought in the food industry they had to be vomit free for twenty four hours, regardless of position, or is that up to the place?" Is that because you could accidentally vomit in the food? Yeah, I have no idea. Um, again, I I think she was probably too embarrassed or too scared to tell. Mm-hmm. Or oftentimes when you say you're sick and you're at work, you have this fear because it is backed up by this that your boss is not going to believe you. Yeah. So could be that. Also, it could have been that she just kind of because it wasn't that much longer till she went home. Could have been waiting for someone to pick her up. Yeah. I think the other part is this happened a lot during the pandemic, too, when everyone was just yelling to yelling at everybody to stay home. There are certain people that just can't afford to stay home. Yeah. Especially if you work in an industry like that. If you're in the service industry, you don't get oftentimes that benefit. In a lot of service industry jobs, it is your responsibility to find coverage if you can't make it. And if you can't do that, you're expected to show up or there's usually some sort of um, repercussions for you. It's it's some not everyone has the, the luxury of being able to say, I don't feel well. I am staying home, whether it's the business itself or whether it's their finances at home. You know, we don't know how old, we don't actually know how old this girl was, this woman was, and she could have had a kid at home that she's trying to support. We don't know. I remember that it was really one of the saddest things that I had experienced 
I was uh, hiring people for my dad's restaurant in Jersey City. And there were a lot of high school kids that would come in for jobs. And normally, they were asking for after school hours. So like after three o'clock, we'd hire one or two for a shift here and there. And I remember I interviewed this one girl and she came in, she was super prepared. She had her paperwork from school because she was still 15. Oh, wow. And, you know, it, throughout the process, I just said, you know, why? Because it was like some work release. She was able to leave early if she, if she needed to, to get this job. And uh, not work release sounds like prison, but you know what I mean? From school. From school. And yes, from I had asked her, you know, why she's trying to get this job or what, what made her apply. And her actual answer, like, broke my heart. And she just straight right off the bat said, I need to afford diapers for my kid. Nope. And she was 15. And that is someone who I'm sure one, we weren't able to hire her. We hired too many other high school kids at the time. Um, but I'm sure that whenever she got her job, that was a job that she could not afford to skip out if she wasn't mm -hmm. feeling well or whatever, because that's a huge responsibility. Yeah. And it's, it's heartbreaking, but it's, that's a life that a lot of people live. There was something I was listening to yesterday where from a global standpoint, not an American standpoint, but from a global standpoint, you are in the 1% of the world if you make over $40,000 a year. That's crazy. And now, again, that's the world. So you're including a lot of third world or developing countries. Um, here in America, I think it's like 70,000 puts you in the top 10%. Something crazy like that, which 70,000 is a good salary. No one's going to poop on 70,000. No. But it's also when you think of the top 10%, you probably think of way more money than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I think 10%, top 10%, I'm thinking like millionaires. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm just, before I go off, uh -huh. slap a zombie. When you said irresponsibility though, in response to a 15 year old being pregnant, please elaborate. Or don't. <laughs> I don't know if I need to hear that or read that. Um, it is sad. Uh, let's see. It's Meg. Megan said, I saw a dad post on TikTok the other day about becoming a grandpa at 32. His daughter is 14, but he's been so supportive of her, made me cry. Yeah. I mean, that's what you that's hope awesome. every parent does, yes. regardless of what their kids get into or what decisions their kids make, good or bad. Yeah, you want your kid to be able to tell you when they're going through something exactly. like that and not deal with it behind your back. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I think a lot of the problems that we have today, I'm not trying to blame all parents, but I think if we had better support systems for kids a lot of the problems that we have would go away, but it's also cyclical because sometimes parents can't afford to be there all the time for their kids. And it just, it yeah. kind of goes yep. in this terrible cycle. Um, it's not always their fault though. Let's see. I don't know how we got, oh, cause I was talking about the, the girl that Are I Are we back to penis size? <laughs> how so? I don't know. Uh, next on the list though. So we did, men are getting bigger down there. We did, we did that part. Uh, restaurant puker, turning 35, and wrong text, Carla Marie. Sorry. What? I just want to just, I'm, I'm just still stuck in the fact that, like, if that is real, if you're sitting here, gonna, like, you need to not come back to the show. I don't know who you're talking to. The, you cannot just say irresponsible for a 15-year-old getting pregnant. Because one, you don't know. First of all, I had sex at 15, and a condom broke one time and got stuck inside the other time that was responsible sex as i was taught in school also this girl could have been raped yeah. so do not come onto this show and ever blame someone for being pregnant you don't know if it was her fault fault and guess what maybe she was just going out having sex with dudes all the time with no condoms on okay and then you get pregnant yeah, that's still sad, but you're 15. You do not blame that child yeah. for something. And if that's not what you meant, I apologize, but that's what it looks like. Uh, Weisenshine said there's also such a lack of teaching in yes. schools about sexual education. That, yes. is a, that is a big problem that we have um, in our school systems today. There's a lot of problems we have in our school systems. That's one of the like many. The fact that... Well, you don't know. We don't, we don't have any other information. So we can't sit here and... Uh, Thank you, Angela. Someone was that Angela. Why is it always the girl's fault when it took a penis to impregnate mm -hmm. her? 
Back yeah. to what I was saying earlier. Well, it's the, always the woman's fault where they get pregnant or can't get pregnant. I will say this. <laughs> it's never the guys. I will say this, especially in this girl's situation. If you weren't here when I was explaining, I was doing interviews for my dad's restaurant in Jersey City. It was in the food court in Jersey City. And <laughs> one of the girls that came in to interview, turns out she was 15 years old. She had this like work release program. She was allowed to leave school early to get a job. And she literally told me in the interview, I just need a job so I can buy diapers for my baby. And she was, keep in mind, she was 15. And <laughs> the interesting thing to think of is we don't know. Obviously, it took a man. It took a, or a, her, in her case, a boy, right. someone to get her pregnant. And it didn't seem like she had any support from that person. Right. From her own family, from that person, from that person's family. So even though. We all know, and this is the corniest thing to say, it does take two to tango. It yeah. takes two to make a baby. Seems like she was being a pretty responsible person. It didn't seem like she a had a lot of support. And it's it's sad. The sad thing about it is that you hope, and I'm sure anyone can relate to this, if there was a 15-year-old in your life that needed that kind of support, you hope that they would get it either yes. from their family if possible, definitely from the person that got her pregnant as well because that should have been a 50-50 split. Um, or at least that person's family, if like this girl, the the man or boy in that relationship right. was too young, then you hope that both families could come in. But unfortunately, financially, that's not always no a thing, especially that's when not always a possible. Um, so slap a zombie, the person that you uh, were talking to, said, "Nope, not blaming the girl at all. All parties involved, including parents, um, need to support something like that in the, in the, in the chat." Which makes sense. and But again, I, I say this all the time. When you come from a place, like I'm lucky enough where I came from a place where my family was able to support me through all of my bad decisions. <laughs> I didn't make, I never got anyone pregnant. I never got into. That you know of. That I know of. Um, trust me. I Trust me. I got no one pregnant in high school. Oh, in high school. <laughs> trust me. I got no one pregnant in high school. Um, but when you come from a place like that, when you come from a place of support, you take for granted that not everyone has that kind of emotional and financial support. And there are a lot mm -hmm. of just sad situations where I'm sure even if that, that girl's parents wanted to support her, maybe they just couldn't do it financially. Maybe they were stressed out enough and living paycheck yeah. to paycheck before their daughter brought another living being into the world. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not always the easiest thing. And uh, there is this idea that because we had support or we're fortunate enough to, to come up in, in a household like that, that everyone else can. And it's just not the, the no. case. Um, but moving on, moving on <sighs> to the wrong text. I feel like we've gotten into like some very heavy topics today. And this is what we do. <laughs> so wrong text. Now, let me start with the fact that I text myself everything. I... Things for this show, um, like, for example, like, I'll just show you. There I am pinned at the top of my own phone. Okay. See me at the top? That's yes. me right there. Pinned. And I will just in there all day text. Different things. So for this, I wrote sushi restaurant puker, turning 35, <laughs> wrong text, penis size. Like, those are the texts that I sent myself yesterday. Okay. Uh, news articles, things to talk about here or the morning show podcast. Um, I'll even write like captions if I need to post on Instagram. It's so much easier to write them here, send them to myself, um, photos of things that I, if I'm going through my Google photos mm -hmm. that aren't on my phone, I'll text them to myself. If I want to repost them thoughts, okay. things, codes, logins, whatever. So where's this going? So my phone has been like wonky lately. Mm -hmm. And at some point, all my texts started going through is green. Like, I'd say a few months ago. You were like an Android person. And I was like, that's so weird. Did people treat you like absolute dog shit? <laughs> I was texting myself, <laughs> okay. so I did not. And I was like, it's weird that they all started sending as green, but whatever, I'm chalking it up to something changed. Because normally it's an iMessage and it's blue and whatever. Then the other day, I was having an issue with my phone, and I restarted it, and I wanted to see if the text went through. So from my laptop, I text the word, hello. Okay. I see it goes through. I'm like, it's working. And then a text responds back and says, stop texting me. <laughs> and I was like this. 
Did I? Carla Marie texted me, stop texting me. So what? Was it an old number? Do you remember when we worked on the radio station and T-Mobile gave us those extra phones? Oh, yeah. And we each got our own phone number with T-Mobile. And we were like, it was like our work phone. Yeah. I had it saved in my phone (laughs) under Carla Marie. And for months, I was texting this person photos of us, notes. They were getting things like turning 35, penis size, wrong text, (laughs) nose thing. Like, for when I tell you months, probably, I mean, way before Christmas, I like I can't remember when this happened. And I was like mortified. I didn't even respond because I didn't want to say something along the lines of these are things I was texting myself. Yeah. Because I, then I was like, what did I send? Did I certain passwords. I don't think that ever happened, but whatever it was. And I was like, I didn't want to tell them, like tip them off. So I just deleted the number. I still need to block it. But you text yourself too? No, I was testing. I, I've texted myself in the past. I don't do it very often. Last time I did it was... I mean, I wonder if they started know. watching the show. I would send, like, links to myself of things I needed <laughs> to post. Oh, oh, okay. So those all came through here. So does this person have an Android phone? I, yeah. Because they're, they're green? Idiot. Yeah, I say I have a notes app. That's where I save everything. So do I. But these are, like, quick thoughts. They're so much easier to text than to open up the notes app where everything goes to so die So what's for the me? most embarrassing thing you've probably sent this person other than a text that says penis size? It's pro- oh, no. I wonder if this went through to them. Because some now, of them are blue. Well, now I'm wondering if it's sometimes, like, it's... Well, you should probably delete that whole I did. Thread. I did. De- no, I deleted this number. Why is it oh, still here? Oh, stop yelling. Stop yelling in the mic. Um... But you should probably just delete that whole thread. Oh, I did. You oh deleted the thread? I did. I'm redeleting it. Okay. Why is this happening? I'm deleting it. Because the number Remember came when back. you were making fun of me for like searching things improperly <laughs> before? You're like, oh, I'm so smart and I could beat you in a search. Blah, blah, blah. You can't even text yourself Something properly. Happened here. Things went things went awry. But I um did measurements of my body. I had you measure yeah, yeah. The, my thigh, waist. They got my full measurements. Did you get the pictures? Are you sending no, pictures too? No. Then I was like, what did I send in this chat? <laughs> You're right, Lisa. What? It's like my phone is reverting prior to like backing it up. Okay. This is the real me. Um, so Shoestrings11 said, that's so funny. Maybe text it to Anthony. I text my random thoughts to my husband. He will lose do, his mind. Do not text me. All of the random. I already get, and we both do this. We already get. A lot of the random thoughts that each of us have because of this show will have like a random thought like, oh, remember to talk about this right. or re- remember to talk about this on the podcast. The last thing I need is even more random, uncomposed thoughts yeah. <laughs> sent to me. No. So please. I can't do that to you. Uh, can you text the line for the show, says Karina? Because oh. we do have the show line. No, we're good I'm texting the proper, the, the real Carla Marie. Not the Are fake. you sure? A cat probably outside doing something. I send all my random thoughts to my BFF who lives in Jamaica. No, like when I'm telling you, these aren't like, these aren't formulated thoughts. <laughs> oh, you can text to an email. You can. You could do that, Carla Marie. Yeah, I don't know why you just don't use the notes app though. On like my you, phone? Yeah, use Google Keep or just sure Apple has a version. I don't like, I'm, when I'm telling you, this is like I'm driving and something and I'm mm. just like, Talking to my phone or at Orange Theory, if I think of something on the treadmill, I text it to myself. So it's tr- when I tell you, I have tried every way. I used the Notes app for years. I used Google Keep for years. I ca- I used, uh, what is the one with the elephant logo? Keep Notes? Evernote. Ju- Evernote. I used that for years. Like, Remember, Evernote was been, like a big thing. I don't know if anyone's still using it, it but I, Evernote, that took off. I loved it. Um, I but, do want to. I do want to shout out Scotty for a second, Carla Marie. I need to put this on the screen. Scotty is joining the club. Wait, he is Scotty? leaving the Apple world. No. And he is coming to Android. Let me see. He's getting his Samsung phone. Why, Scotty? Um, and he says it comes in tomorrow. And I, I believe because Scotty messaged me about this a couple of weeks ago when he decided he was going to make the jump. And I believe one of his friends had the newest Samsung, which I think is the twenty three. And he was impressed by that phone, which it is a very impressive phone, mm. and uh, well, decided to come over. Don't ever text me again, Scotty. Lexi loves CLE, also in the club. 
Um, ever I will say that every note thing that everyone has texted me on ways to remember things are things I have tried and not worked. So I've I've learned that other than saving articles that I need to read mm. to be better informed for the podcast that we do, the morning show podcast, available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um or YouTube videos I need to watch to do this better. I'm terrible at taking notes. I'm terrible at leaving notes for myself. I'm terrible like, at reminding to myself yeah. to do things. Like there's the reminders app. I just don't use it anymore because it got to a point where I had so many reminders that I just ignored them. Mm -hmm. So if I need to do something, I have to set an, a, a physical alarm on my Which phone. Which is the most annoying. And you heard one go off during the show. But normally they're on, vib on vibrate. Otherwise, it will not ever get done. Also, there's a lot of uh, Android love in here. Linda67 said, I love my Android. Fred the Mailman, Linda. Scotty Whips, is leaving Apple because he's no longer 15. Also, Char from Tampa just got her uh, S23 Ultra yesterday. You know what I'm going to do? Because you have an extra emote, Carla Marie. You have a football emote that we made, especially for you when you took over for the uh, Seahawks took hosting over. duties. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to the same person who has made our emotes, and I'm going to have him somehow... Make me an Android like character. It'll be like my emote mixed with an Android, like the little robot. So it'll be a loser. You yeah. should just do a loser. All of them are losers. Every emote of me, because it's me, is a loser. I just That's... want everyone to know that. No, just the Android one. Oh, yeah. You should have a green bubble over your head. Or right. that. Yeah. Um, Martha says we've been off centered for an hour and it's driving her nuts. Off centered. Like on the screen. Yeah, I guess there's more on my side. Yeah, so you have to go that way. Oh. It's also tough, like, the uh, view that we have. We actually don't see ourselves very well. I can't see my head right now because to have a better line of sight to the camera. The camera's in front of the computer it's, screen. Yeah, it's right in front of the computer screen. So there's a lot that we're not seeing. Well, we'll do guest star one day on our phone. To show. What do you mean? Oh, to show our view? There is actually, because it's an Android, I can uh, connect my Android or one of the phones that we have, like a spare phone in here, to OBS and it can be used as a second camera. And a lot of a lot of streamers will do that so they can quickly go to that and just show people their setups. Fred the mailman said Android. Android is good. I really should be a spokesperson for, for Google. No, nope, I'm telling you, I am pitching Apple for you to be the spokesperson as a like a transplant. It would be such oh, a good to, to bring me over it to It was Apple? like when the Verizon guy left whatever. He, he went to Sprint, I believe. I will say, if you ever see me posting about Apple. They paid you handsomely. They paid me well. <laughs> like, very well. I, I, don't, I, I don't know if it'd be like six figures, but they would pay me well. Listen, Android, I can also be bought. <laughs> yeah. If you see either of us, I guess, you know that that company thought we were valuable enough to, to buy us out. That would probably be the, the hardest thing for me to switch. In my life. Your phone? I mean, or just like jump ship for. I I do think, and you know, having the Apple Android debate is fun and I love having team Android. It seems like we have a lot of support here in the chat. Um, but I will say this. They're very similar at this point. The phones themselves are very similar. Like both of them take really great pictures. Both of them have their own ecosystem. The biggest difference, I think, Apple does a slightly better job of incorporating all of their products into their phones. Well, you're, but you're, it's not like you have an Android computer to be able to do that. No, they do have, they are, there are Android based do, comp like, computers. I don't have one. Um, but generally speaking, Android and Windows work together really well. The thing that Android gives you is a little more of a customized experience. You can change things easier on an Android. Um, like and there's a lot of things that Android phones will bring to the market first, like widgets. I mean, how how cool are widgets on your Apple on your iPhone now? And we've had widgets. I don't even use them since just the weather one. 2010. I do you know? love my weather widget. So it, it just depends on what you want. If my brother explains it really well, if you want to just take your phone out of the box and use it immediately. Apple's probably where you want to go. Thank you. But if the first thing you do is open up your phone and go into the settings, Android is probably the way you go. If you care about settings, customizing things, all of that, 
Android's probably the way to go. Mm. So put a poll up. Yeah, we could. That could be the last thing we do oh, today. I do have a calendar widget that I love. Are you an Apple? Who who wants to put the poll up? One of the mods can do it. I had to pee. Bad. Oh, what's a widget? How would you explain a widget, Carla Marie? Um. <laughs> what are you showing? You have to- so I have the calendar widget on the top of my iPhone. That's the weather. Yep. That's, That's the weather, weather widget. widget. <laughs> and then down here is calendar widget. So like so- I can see the things that I have to do today right there mm-hmm. without even having like a calendar open. And then I can tap into it right there. And so I a everything. widget is essentially an icon or a larger tile on your screen that allows you to see some of the information from that app mm-hmm. at a glance without opening the app. I don't know. No, if that I- like my main screen is this. You can put widgets on here, Mm -hmm. but then when I open it, that's my first one. And then my second one, I just have a few more apps and I, you have the Google drive widget. And then when you swipe over, there's all the apps. Yeah. If you go to mine, the only thing is on top, there's a weather widget. That's the only thing I have on here. You can do a photos one too. So you get a cute little rotation. Um, I also have saved on here. Like you can, if you go to Safari and you love whatever website you visit every day, like the morning show podcast.com. You hit the little bottom thing that like send arrow guy. And then you scroll down and you hit add to home screen. So on my home screen, I have the morning show podcast um, link that mm-hmm. I can send out easily on social media. I also have our newsletter saved. Um, I have our, you look great store. And then the game form for people that are like, Oh, I want to play a game. It's all there. I don't have to search anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Katie124 said, I'm currently an Apple user due to peer pressure, but I definitely prefer Android, and I miss my Galaxy. You can always come back, Katie. You can always come back. Um, it's I don't know how what you would change, but it's Meg, not Megan said, you have the websites on the bottom. Uh, I hate, or I had to change that. What is What does she mean, Carla Marie? What websites? Oh, you mean in Safari when they did that update? I loved it. So it used to be up here. Yeah, that's what type. mine is. And when they did an update, they moved it down here, and everyone was losing their mind. And I was like, but that's where my hands are. My hands aren't up oh, here I to see. type. Makes sense. Like, I can see um, that. I kept it. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Well, I didn't, I mean, it's closer than I expected. We've got 32% of the chat right now that's at least, um, oh, you, you ruined the whole, the whole thing for us. So Carla Marie put us down from our account as an iPhone. Um, but we are at 32% Android and 67% iPhone. But I will say, Katie, the peer pressure thing that you mentioned earlier, uh, switching from Android to iPhone due to peer pressure, is basically the iPhone business model. It is quite literally the reason that they have green bubbles, peer pressure. They they have said in court documents, it's been revealed, that the reason they, they even though they could... I'm going to look to see if Apple's hiring. They could very easily... Change all the bubbles to blue or make them customizable. But they don't want parents buying cheaper phones, Androids, for their kids. And they know that the kids will fall to the peer pressure more than adults will. So they get them into the ecosystem as early as possible. And you're less likely to switch ones. Because the the fact of the matter is, once you are in either of those ecosystems, it's rare that you're going to change. You're not going to go back and forth all the time. Apple, just okay, building was... bigots. Apple's motto. Bigotry is the way to win. Oh, I'm seeing if Apple has uh, any career opportunities. Because I would crush it. What would you do for them? I'm unsure yet, but I'm not going to... Where do they live? Menlo Park? No, that's Facebook. Menlo Park, New Jersey? California. <laughs> uh, we have been on here for a while. Wow, it's 930. I had no idea. Thank you to everyone who uh, joined in the chat. We appreciate you very much. Don't forget there is a new episode of the Morning Show podcast available today yeah. wherever you listen to podcasts. There will be one tomorrow. If you haven't followed or subscribed to that channel, that podcast, we would really, really appreciate that. And until Monday, we say peace out. Peace out, Cub Scouts. <laughs>